Here is a chart of the best scores of the 2016-2017 NBA season, featuring all of the greatest players in the game. LeBron James, Stephen Curry, Kawhi, Damian Lillard, Anthony Davis. But I want y'all to take a guess at who this player is. He scored more points in that season than any player I just named, averaging nearly 29 points for the entire season. Need another hint? Well, that same season, this player was an all-star and made the all-NBA second team, earning more votes than Paul George and Chris Paul, and earning nearly as many votes as Giannis and Kevin Durant. By virtually every metric, this player was a top 10 player in the NBA that season. But if you don't know who I'm talking about yet, let me compare him exclusively to his peers. In the 2016-2017 season, this player had a higher PER, more win shares, and averaged more points per game than Stephen Curry, Kyrie Irving, Chris Paul, and Damian Lillard. Sounds like an all-time talent, right? Well, these are the numbers from Isaiah Thomas, a man that just a few seasons ago was an MVP candidate but was abruptly bounced out of the league for reasons that just don't add up. They gave up on me. Two weeks ago at the AEBL Pro-Am in Atlanta, Isaiah Thomas put on a scoring clinic that only a lethal NBA vet could produce. A 65 point performance by the once great Celtic guard. And this pro am is no joke, featuring NBA players like Paul Millsap, Montrez Harrell, Lou Williams, and Mike Scott, as well as dozens of high talent college players and overseas pros. To go out and score 65 on any level is incredible, and to do it in this summer league is just that more special. This league has been going on for eight years. Isaiah Thomas pulled up for one game and set a new league record for points. So how does he follow up this legendary performance? Just a week after his 65-point game, Isaiah Thomas flew across the country to Jamal Crawford's Pro-Am in Seattle and put up 81 points, destroying the old league scoring record of 66 points set two years ago by NBA guard Langston Galloway. Again, IT did this against pro-level competition. 81 points. Mans had 48 in the second half, being guarded by everyone on the opposing team, including guys with NBA size and length. There was literally nothing they could do about it. Even Jamal Crawford, who's been hosting the Summer League for almost two decades and has seen it all, is on the sideline like, what am I witnessing? And this pro-am has been one of the most prolific ones in recent history. A few years ago, Zach Levine pulled up and dropped 50 points. Kevin Porter Jr. scored 40 points in a game a couple years ago. Aaron Gordon came through and put up 36. DeJounte Murray, a homegrown talent, scored 44 points in the crossover pro-am. But nobody has done what Isaiah Thomas did last week. So my question to the NBA is why is this man not in the league? 
If you can watch this footage and tell me with a straight face that this is not NBA level talent, you're out of your mind. In 2017, Isaiah Thomas averaged 28.9 points per game. Out of every single active NBA player, only 10 have averaged that many points in a single season, including six MVPs and six scoring champions. All of these players will eventually be first ballot Hall of Famers. And then there's Isaiah Thomas, who put up these numbers while leading the Celtics to the Eastern Conference Finals. And yet somehow, less than two seasons later, he is struggling to even make an NBA roster. Bouncing from the Celtics, to the Cavaliers, to the Lakers, to the Nuggets, to the Wizards, to the Pelicans. Six teams in five seasons for a player that not too long ago was doing things that only generational talent has accomplished. Can someone offer me a real reason why Isaiah Thomas isn't in the NBA? The only knock on his game that anyone ever suggests is his height, which leads to him being a massive defensive liability. But in his last three full seasons in the NBA, Isaiah had an average defensive box plus minus of negative 0.9 which sounds bad, but it's not much worse than many other star point guards in the NBA. Over the last three seasons, Stephen Curry has had an average defensive box plus minus of negative 0.3. Damian Lillard has had an average DBPM of negative 0.9. De'Aaron Fox has had a DBPM of negative 0.5 over the last three seasons. Since entering the NBA, John Morant has had a DBPM of negative 1.6, and Trey Young has had an average DBPM of negative 2.3 teams are willing to give up a little bit more on the defensive end if it means they get excellent output on the offensive end, especially for guards. But for some reason, this exception is not made for Isaiah Thomas. The misconception that his defense is so bad that he isn't even worth having on a roster is just flat out wrong. And other than this one critique, I can't even think of another reason why teams continue to pass up on him. There are 450 roster spots in the NBA, and every single player that has one is in the extremely small percentage of basketball players that deserve one. Even the worst NBA player could walk all of us in a game of one-on-one. -on -one. But with that being said, a 35-year-old Jared Dudley is still on the Lakers offering nothing but meme material. The Cavaliers signed a 38-year-old Anderson Verajao last season just to give him another shot. For crying out loud, Udonis Haslam has played 15 games in three seasons, and he just signed another deal with the Heat. Dude's stat sheet just says, moral support. And I know I'm being harsh to get my point across, but you cannot convince me that of the 450 roster spots in the NBA, Isaiah Thomas hasn't earned one of them. This man averaged 35 points per game for an entire month. He dropped 52 points in a game, then turned around and dropped 53 points in the playoffs against a prime John Wall. The only player in NBA history under 6 feet tall to drop 50 plus points in a playoff game. And the most recent player under 6 feet to score 50 plus points in an NBA game since Damon Stoudemire did it in 2005. He put up 44 points against an excellent defender in Tony Allen. He put 39 points on Derrick Rose's head. He dropped 41 on Lillard. He dropped 38 on Patrick Beverly. He put up 41 against Reggie Jackson, and he smoked Kyle Lowry for 44 points. This excellence is not a fluke, and it is obviously a skill set that is NBA worthy. Now sure, these games were four years ago, and things have changed since then. If you look at Isaiah's numbers since that season, they've clearly fallen off dramatically. But only a fraction of this decline can be attributed to his injuries or him just getting worse. The main factor here is a lack of opportunity. In Boston, the Celtics gave Isaiah the keys to the offense. They allowed him to actually use his skill set the way it was meant to be used. And clearly, clearly, it worked. Since that season, the Celtics had the best record in the Eastern Conference and made it all the way to the Conference Finals, the heart and soul of that team being Isaiah Thomas. Just look at this starting five. Isaiah Thomas made it to the Conference Finals with this starting five and was sadly and unjustifiably stripped away from his role the very next season, which was the genesis of his downfall. NBA GMs would rather have a prototypical lanky 6'7 forward who comes off the bench every once in a while and will give him five points rather than an Isaiah Thomas who is a proven talent. NBA teams would rather have a seven foot center with no merit to experiment with and throw money at for five seasons than have Isaiah Thomas. And I don't get it. The man is 32 years old. He's a two time all-star who's been a part of NBA culture for a decade. I just don't get it. 
A few years ago when news broke that Isaiah's sister passed away, this man still came out the next day with a heavy heart and had a monster game in the playoffs against the Bulls. He showed determination, he showed courage, and he showed leadership. This performance, although far from his best, was defining for him in his career. This man has never had an easy path. He's had to fight through adversity even in his brightest moments. So to see him like this, with NBA teams continuing to turn him away and refusing to acknowledge the hard work and dedication he has poured into his craft, is just sad. He doesn't deserve this. I really hope Isaiah Thomas is given another opportunity to shine in the NBA. He is more than capable, and he not only deserves it, but he's earned it. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.